Good morning. My name is Sergeant Jeremy Pierce, Public Information Officer for the Indiana State Police Lafayette Post. I'd like to thank you all for being here and thank the Delphi United Methodist Church for allowing us to use their facility. This morning, we're going to provide an update on the investigation into the murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German. Before we get started, I'm going to introduce to you our speakers, Superintendent of the Indiana State Police, Doug Carter, the Carroll County Sheriff, Tobe Lesenby, and the Carroll County Prosecutor, Nick McClelland. I'd like to remind everyone that this continues to be an active and ongoing investigation. At the conclusion of this press conference, we are going to answer a limited amount of questions out of respect to the investigation and the process that will follow today. We will not discuss evidence that is related to this investigation. On behalf of the Delphi Double Homicide Task Force, thank you all for your continued support. I would now like to introduce to you our first speaker, Superintendent of the Indiana State Police, Doug Carter. Give me just a second here. <clears throat> Seldom do I have prepared remarks, but today is different because I do not want there, be, there to be any confusion or ambiguity with what I will say. Today is not a day to celebrate, but the arrest of Richard M. Allen of Delphi on two counts of murder is sure a major step in leading to the conclusion of this long-term and complex investigation. First, I'd like to speak directly to Anna, Mike, Becky, Kelsey, your extended families, along with the entire Delphi community that certainly has grown and now includes our nation and even many countries around the world. I am proud to report to you that today, Actually, last Friday was the day, and an arrest has been made. Thanks to literally hundreds of media outlets that have been steadfast in reporting and keeping the memories of Abby and Libby front and center. Many of you in the room have developed relationships with me personally, and you know I always have a personal perspective, and today's no different. But from a very personal perspective, you have provided, you all have provided inspiration and support, even while oftentimes frustrated with us and me. You continue, but you continue to encourage the efforts, and you too believe that one day we would all be here participating and sharing this news. To the entire law enforcement community, which includes all local, state, and federal agencies, which are far too many to specifically mention today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are going to continue a very methodical and committed approach to ensure that if any other person had any involvement in these murders in any way, that person or persons will be held accountable. Since the murders of Abby and Libby 2,086 days ago, the daily investigative team has worked tirelessly and is certainly worthy of mention today. Specifically, Sheriff Lindsenby, the Sheriff of Carroll County, Detectives Tony Liggett, Detective retired Kevin Hammond, former Delphi Chief and now the Prosecutor's Investigator Steve Mullins, State Police First Sergeant Jerry Holman, Detectives Jay Harper, Dave Vito, and Brian Harshman, along with members of the United States Marshal Service, specifically Agent Jeremy Clinton and Agent Bill Colfers. With them today is Dan McLean, the U.S. Marshal, appointed U.S. Marshal. Our State Police Analyst, 
our scientists from many different disciplines within our laboratory division, Mrs. Kathy Shank, for your incredible dedication to detail and to so many others that I know I've missed. I really believe that Abby and Libby would be proud of you for standing strong, even in the face of immense pressure and perpetual criticism. Some of these individuals have postponed retirement, passed on promotional opportunity, have dedicated personal time away from their families, given up nights, weekends, and holidays, all while in the pursuit of accountability for Abby and Libby. I know that today's announcement will not diminish your resolve, and I hope you have found just a bit of peace in this most complicated world. This is really important. While I know you are all expecting final details today concerning this arrest, today is not that day. Today is not that day. This investigation is far from complete, and we will not jeopardize its integrity by releasing or discussing documents or information before the appropriate time. Prosecutor Nick McClellan, of course, will share additional information about what we can and cannot say, and also explain to you why the probable cause affidavit is temporarily sealed by the court and not available. And by the way, he has been a tremendous, tremendous asset to this team. I'm yet again asking you for your patience and please your understanding while our system of due process works. Also remember that all persons arrested are presumed innocent. All persons arrested are presumed innocent. You all will have an innate desire to subjectively interpret and then report what you think. We in the law enforcement realm cannot and you should never allow us to talk about what we think concerning facts, but rather discuss and share at the right time what it is we know. The time will come when additional details can be released, but again, today is not that day. It's about Abby and Libby, their families in this community, this nation, and even our planet. The prosecutor has been very clear with law enforcement about what his expectations are, about what can and cannot be released, shared, or discussed. So we will, of course, comply. If you choose to be critical of our silence, be critical of me. not the front line. These are the folks who have committed their entire lives to a successful conclusion. In other words, a guilty verdict. As we move to the next phase of this investigation, I will continue to offer all resources that the ISP has to not only the investigative team that I anticipate growing, but also to Prosecutor McClellan as we prepare for the coming months. Again, Nick has been very resolute and very clear, and I'm most grateful uh, for, for, his, for his leadership, and I, I, it's going to be really important as we move forward. Please continue offering tips that you would like to share. The many avenues to report will remain open and will be available to all. Please continue doing that. In closing, I stand before you in this church and very place where we held our first briefing nearly six years ago and just hours after the murders of Abby and Libby. Right here. Pulling in today, I wasn't really sure what emotion I would, I would experience 
but peace came over me. And I didn't expect that to happen. And I hope all of you, with all the different responsibilities you have from around the planet today, have felt some of that as well. But remember, we're not done. I think what we all have experienced proves that together there's nothing we cannot do. But more importantly, giving of ourselves, all of us, all of us, giving of ourselves matters more than what we could ever receive. Abby and Libby, though in death, have had a profound effect on so many of us, on how we live, and as importantly, who we all should be. I would now like to introduce to you my friend and the Carroll County Sheriff, Tom Ledsby, for his remarks. Sure. I believe in a God of justice and righteousness. Today, I believe that same God has provided us with justice for Abby and Libby. As Sheriff of Carroll County, Indiana, I want to publicly and sincerely thank each individual who played a role in helping us during this five and a half year investigation. Whether it was in an investigative capacity, providing tips, cards or letters of suggestions or encouragement, phone calls, and thousands of other countless ways of communicating. I earnestly thank those who prayed for this moment in time. We now move forward through the Indiana criminal justice system allowing the system to provide its due diligence and process in providing that justice which is owed Abby and Libby, their families, and this community. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. My name is Nicholas McClellan. I'm the Carroll County Prosecutor. And before we get started, I want to reiterate some of the things that Sheriff Lesenby and Superintendent Carter stated. I first want to thank both of them. They've been a great support to my office throughout this investigation. They've always been there for a phone call and always been willing to help a hand or uh, a line of assistance to me and my office uh, during this investigation. I want to thank the team behind me. This is the Homicide Task Force team that we've put together. Uh, Thank them and thank their families for being so understanding for the many nights they've worked away from their families, away from their children. There are many dates in a lifetime that you're going to remember. The date your children are born, the date you're married, the date you buy a first house, the date Abby and Libby went missing. One of those dates was last Friday, October 28, 2022. At that time, we had gathered evidence to formulate a PC that we submitted to the court, and the judge did find probable cause for an arrest of Richard Allen. He's been charged with two counts of murder for the murder of Abigail Williams and Liberty German. This investigation is still very ongoing. We're keeping the tip line open, the tip email open. We encourage everybody to continue to call in tips, not only about Richard Allen, but about any other person that you may have. For that reason and for the nature of this case, the probable cause and the charging information has been sealed by the court. I've been very clear to everybody that per the court order, we cannot talk about the evidence that's in the probable cause or the evidence that's in the charging information. That will become evident to you at some point and it will be released, but right now is not that day. Today's about Abby and Libby, focusing on them. 
Mr. Allen has had his initial hearing. He's entered a preliminary plea of not guilty. The matter has been set for a pretrial on January 13th at 9 a.m. 2023 and a trial date of March 20th, 2023 at 9 a.m. He is presumed innocent. We will have an opportunity and day in court when we can present the evidence that we have against him. But until that day, he is presumed innocent. 